overall, crime has been down here in Central Park, but every, every now and then, some thief thinks he can pull one off. But the other night, one thief had a rude awakening when he ran into the ninja of Central Park when he tried to rip off a couple of purses. I knew I was getting, I, I thought I might have been up for a, a 10 kilometer run. I just put my ears back and went for him. He looks like a guy <laughs> straight out of the Australian outback, but Gaston Cavallari is a product of the London Projects who found himself in Central Park at just the moment he could demonstrate his martial arts skills. Two women lounging on the lawn screamed that their purses had just been stolen. The thief began to run. That's when 32-year-old Gaston, who was trained at the Betts Jiu-Jitsu School in Brazil, chased after the thief. I didn't realize I was going to catch him this fast. When I got him, I just knew I had to get him down to the ground because I knew he wouldn't be able to move too well on the ground. Once he caught up with a suspected thief, there was no escaping Gaston's grip. It, it's a hole. You can't really get out of it. And I got a, an arm under my leg. Just rather than having my arm around his, his thigh, I had to move his arm uh, under a leg of mine. So it's more in a like a crucifix. Police arrived minutes later and arrested 16-year-old Charles Williams of the Bronx, who had been charged with grand larceny and possession of stolen property. In one instant, you were Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, all in one right here in Central Park. Yeah, guess the one. Guess the one. <laughs> uh, yeah, g'day. Look, I thought that was pretty funny too when I first saw it. Um... I wasn't going to do the interview, then a mate of mine said, you know, it'd be funny, why don't you dress up as a crocodile hunter? So I did that. Um, trying to pull out and so on along the way up to, to Central Park, and, and then, then the mate, I said, look mate, I, I don't want um, my face all over the, the news in Australia. And he said, listen, put on a, um, an English accent. So, so I did that, and um, yeah, that's it. Things got funny when, when the, the TV guy, um, can't think of his name, but I think he's all over the TV in New York, um, he said, you know, show us, show us the nerve, show us what you did to the, the character. So, so I did that, and I'm trying, to, trying not to let my hat knock off, here it is here, have a look at it there. Gaston told me that he has perfected his chokehold over the years, and simply in the interest of illustrating the story, I allowed him to show me just how effective it is. <laughs> oh, this guy is strong. I managed to get out of that grip in time to ask one more question. You feel like a hero? I feel like I did what, what people should do. And he did certainly do that, a good Samaritan here visiting New York. As for the suspect, Charles Williams, he's been arraigned on the grand larceny charges uh, out uh, without bail, and he's due back in court in October. As for Gaston, well, he's now pitching a book. Okay, so my current book I'll explain just here. So please just uh, give me a moment to change my shirt. Hey guys, I'm uh, the writer Gaston uh, Cavallari. Look, I'm just uh, having a crack at putting one of these videos together to uh, promote this book I've been writing for about about a year, but I've probably had the idea for uh, longer than that. Um, basically, it was to uh, set out in my uh, trip, um, one of my uh, one of the cities I visited while I was travelling around the world. In a nutshell, I've been travelling for about um, about six years at the moment, which is um, longer than the average holiday. But um, uh, I'm in Brazil at the moment, which is uh, which is actually why I've, I've turned to um, this uh, this camera in front of the uh, the computer here for uh, the the photography. Um, everyone here speaks uh, Portuguese, so uh, couldn't get my hands on a cameraman. But uh, more to the point, listen. Um, the book, the book I've got um, happening, I've completed the first chapter down there. I've actually completed most of the book, but I've provided the first chapter. And um, uh, it's going to be a 200-page uh, book, which has got the dimensions of five um, 
inches by eight inches, and um, pretty much the, the genre that it falls into, it's hard to, to put a genre on it because I just sort of write the stuff that's in my head. Um, but um, in the second chapter of the book, uh, you see there's a protagonist, which I mean, you, you write your, your, your dreams on paper when you, when you put a story on paper. So that's what I've tried to, to do. And when I visited uh, New York um, uh, in, in July uh, 2012, that was as far as my holiday. I sort of, I'd been travelling for quite some time. I've been to Colombia. I've lived up there for about a year and a half. I've lived in um, Argentina for for a year and, and, and a half as well. Um, and then, and I, I guess I was a bit, um, I, I needed to, to uh, be in touch with the English world a, a little more, so I dropped into New York, and I thought I'd get a, a, a job up there actually. Um, and um, and then anyway, so I visited Central Park up there, and I was out going for a job interview actually, and um, this, uh, this American guy, well, he was actually he was Russian, but he'd uh, he'd, uh, he'd he'd migrated to um, America while he was young, and he's given me a job interview. I suppose we've been going for about ten or fifteen minutes, and um, I hear this girl in the background. Um, she's screaming out or something. There's actually, I saw this this character before that. He's running ahead of her. He's carrying this. Um, this uh, this handbag, and so I thought, well, it looks a bit odd, you know. This character's running ahead. He's got a girl behind him. And I've got my job interview on the left of me here, and um, she screams out, "Help!" I've just been living in Colombia there before that. I think I'd only been in Colombia for about four months or something similar to that before I opened. You know, you get a few robberies down there and stuff. And, um, I uh, I thought New York was a nice place. And the first time in Central Park, I thought this is lovely. It's just all green and and nice and nice and shady, uh, you know, sections under the sun or whatever. So I said, listen to this guy beside me, they, they do robberies here. And he said, um, yeah, yeah, sometimes. So I said, I said, um, I, don't know. I thought, why is he not doing anything? This guy seems cool about it, you know. She screams help again, and I thought, oh, well, Jesus, I've got all my clothes on ready to to have a run and that sort of thing, um, uh, runners and so on, because the job I was going for was, um, it was, um, I was exercising people and stuff um, in New York, so uh, I'd run this guy down anyway, and, um, I think I'd run this roughly for about, um, I don't know, four, five hundred metres, something like that, anyway, it was a big park, I didn't know how big it was, it was the first day I'd been in there, and you got all the, the city outside and all that sort of stuff, so, um, I thought, I thought, well, I'll chase this guy. And anyway, there's all these fences. I'm jumping these fences. And then there's babies' prams. I thought, oh, Jesus, if he run over one of these prams, I'll be, I'll be in trouble anyway. So there's a bridge coming up ahead. And I thought, well, I'll duck down the right here. This guy's going down the left. And I thought, there's a gully going under the bridge. So I'm, I'm pretty, um, I went to Jiu Jitsu for about um, uh, probably uh, 12 years, I think I've been doing that now. So, um, I, uh, and, and yeah, I was a bit of a good runner when I was, I was young as well, so I also do a fair bit of um, uh, jogging and so on at leisure. So anyway, over the other side of the bridge, we get around there, oh, you, you, there's a bridge over here and it's cut over the left and I've gone over the, the right and it was just something, we met down in the middle of the gully, so I thought, well, we get down here and then I see this guy and when I got up close to him, I thought, shit, that's right. I hurt my shoulder at, um, at just Carnival. Carnival was in, is, uh, that year was about the 14th or 15th of February, and uh, I used to get riding the Carnival. I've done about six years in a row, I've been actually. And um, so my shoulder was stuck. And I thought, well, okay, I've got that. And I thought, well, this guy's got to go to the ground because if we, if we don't go down, he might give me a hide. And I thought, I've got a tough shoulder, I'm not going to sit down up here. Uh, but waiting for things to happen. So he went down to the ground and um, uh, I was putting on his, I was going on his back. I thought he was going to be strong because he's pretty athletic looking. I thought, well, you know, I better give him, give him a bit. And um, uh, I'm holding him down on the ground and then he says, um, I got him in his rear naked um, choker hold and um, he said, I can't breathe. Actually, I haven't that way. Um, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Um, so I said, 
said, hey, you can't breathe. She said, yeah, I've got asthma, I've got asthma, he said, and I thought, Jesus, mate, you shouldn't be bloody stealing airbags, should you? And um, so I, I put it on a bit harder and I said, well, don't, don't, um, just a split second, don't, don't, uh, don't move, or, you know, something will be good for you. And um, anyway, so after that, they sort of pat him on the head because he's got that sort of free hand there. Um, but then I saw a guy, uh, so keep breathing, you know, I said to suck him in, mate, he still knows that for now. The, uh, the cops will be here shortly. Um, and, uh, and then I, I saw this guy come out from under the tree and he was a, um, well, in the end, I didn't know he was a journalist. I find out later. He's a journalist, and I went up and I said to him later, just to look, 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 before I went up to him, though, I, I changed my, my grip on this, um, the uh, first match, and I just put, put him in a, I actually got him this um, crucifix type thing, I sort of put one of his arms under, under my leg, leg from behind, and then I sort of grabbed the other one, so he's mine in between me, like this, and then um, the journalists are snapping shots and, and everything, so the cops come about four minutes later, I can't remember, it's hard to say. Think of time, and then um, the the journo, uh, I went over to him after the cops had finished. I went over to him and I said, Listen, mate, um, I'm just here on holiday. Um, didn't want to say I was looking for, for a job because um, our mate, not an Australian, you know, shouldn't be looking for Well, you can be looking for work. There's an A3 visa up there in, in uh, New York, which will look after you. But um, the, the thing was, anyway, I, he said, um, he said, um, and I said, uh, you might send me those um, photos from email and show mates and so on. And he says, um, listen, I'm actually just working for the uh, New York Post, he said. My name's Bill. I went, oh, the New York Post, eh? Well, that's funny. I've just written a book at the time, and I thought, yeah, it'd be all right to get a bit of, uh, bit of fluff on the, um, on the book. And so, uh, he said, what's your name? I said, Gaston. And, um, and I thought, Jesus, I'm not doing good at all. He just gets his pen, pen out and paper. And I thought, I better shut up. I thought, listen, mate, just check out the website there, mate, please. Um, yeah. Next thing I know, the next day, uh, there's a big article in the paper, all over the paper. I came back to my mate's house and I said, Listen, mate, you won't believe what's happened. Uh, some bloke was running down this, uh, this same person up in the park and I was running uh, Anyway, busting and whatever. And so, anyway, th that's, that's how the, um, the, um, the, I guess that's how the book came about. I mean, it, um, this current book, so. It's, it's just a small section, but it's a particular character, you know. If I'm sort of creating uh, my dreams on, on paper, there were certain things happening in your interest that, um, that become just a, a, just a, a rapid reflection of all different things that have gone on in your mind you just can't control them. So you get yourself in a, in a state where you just sort of write and um, try and put it over on paper and so on. Um, you know, things that did happen come up. So, the the uh, after I'd written my my first book, I, I went on to um, do a master of writing in literature. And, uh, actually, at the moment, I'm doing a thesis for this um, this screenwriting. So, I, I take it all pretty serious. And it, listen, it, it, pretty much, I'm, I'm writing this book regardless. It, it's um it's it's almost cooked. The cover's um been done, I uh, had it done by an artist down in Buenos Aires, he was just on the side of the street and um, selling little pictures, so I said to him, mate, listen, you, um, you can't, some of this stuff will look alright on, on, on a book cover, mate, it's pretty wacky sort of trip down sort of stuff, I thought, well, that's pretty good, that's your idea, it's a bit of a dreamy sort of LSD type thing, not, not that um, the book uh, is in the LSD consumption, but it's that walked out, um, Walked out uh, style of artistry. And, um, there's an image down there that, that shows that. Um, so yeah, have a look at that. The the reason I'm asking for cash is, um, well, uh, I mean, I can go and write a book, but then you've got to get people to read it. How do people read it? Well, who wants to know about some Joe Blow that's um, 
there's some writer from Australia these days anyway who go and publish a book. Um, I, uh, and it's difficult to separate the quality books from the, um, from the, from the, the crappy books. Um, but I've um, been studying write, writing for, for quite some time in order to perfect um, the, the, the book. Before, before I started writing, I graduated in 2005 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physiology. So, so I'm, I'm bringing all this, this together to, to write, write a really um, cool book. And um, So a lot of the money will go towards ensuring that the, um, the book finds its market. And that's why this video is all so put together. Because I want um, I want I want to have pre-sales, um, so when the book comes out, I want to know that the uh, the, the book's going to to homes. Um, also, want um, to invest money into marketing the book to ensure that um, it's just not a book that sits on the shelf. Um, Central Park's a big place. New York's a, a, a big place. There's a big English um, market there, so I I want I want um, the people of, of New York to enjoy a a, um, a cool book. Um, it's uh, it's it's kind of like a modern day. Um, it, it's not a crocodile Dundee, but you know we there wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to have another one of him about. But if you if you imagine the character that I've created, it's a it's a crocodile Dundee crossed with a probably a. Um, Dirk Diggler from Boogie Nights, crossed with a uh, Batman without the suit. He hasn't got these. I won't. I won't. I won't spoil it for you. But um, the have you read the first chapter down there? Save it for you. Um, you'll get a get a book out of it. And um, uh, yeah, yeah. I won't, I won't let this down anyway. So um, that that that's it. All the money will, will go to to ensuring that. Um, this book becomes a, a bestseller, so it's not just one of those things um, that just sits on the on the shelf. Okay, cheers. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, what sort of stuff? Or yeah, bingo. There I am. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.